Hey guys, in today's video, I'm going to share with you what I believe to be the most important religious document ever written. Stay tuned. So this document is not really known in the West. It doesn't really have any reputation. Probably most of the people watching this video right now will have never heard of it. But in my experience and in the experience of many others, this short one-page document has transformed our lives. And it is regarded in the East as being sometimes the only text necessary in order to attain enlightenment. There's a story of a guru in the Mahabharata who's asked, what single text is the most essential for attaining liberation and enlightenment? And in response, the guru says, oh, that's easy. Without a doubt, it is the Mandukya Upanishad. Now the Mandukya Upanishad is incredibly short. I'll show you guys here. It starts on this page and only extends to here, right to here. So it's incredibly short. I mean, it's only, you know, maybe half a dozen paragraphs. So I won't read the entirety of the text just for the sake of time, but I will give you a distinct and general overview of the text. So let's begin. Om, this eternal word is all. What was, what is, and what shall be, and what beyond is in eternity, all is Om. Brahma is all and Atman is Brahma. Atman the self has four conditions. The first condition is the waking life of outward moving consciousness, enjoying the seven outer gross elements. The second condition is the dreaming life of inner moving consciousness, enjoying the seven subtle inner elements in its own light and solitude. The third condition is the sleeping life of silent consciousness. When a person has no desires and beholds no dreams, that condition of deep sleep is one of oneness, a mass of silent consciousness made of peace and enjoying peace. This silent consciousness is all-powerful, all-knowing, the inner ruler, the source of all, the beginning and end of all beings. The fourth condition is Atman in his own pure state, the awakened life of supreme consciousness. It is neither outer nor inner consciousness, neither semi-consciousness nor sleeping consciousness, neither consciousness nor unconsciousness. He is Atman, the spirit himself, that cannot be seen or touched, that is above all distinction, beyond thought and ineffable. In the union with him is the supreme proof of his reality. He is the end of evolution and non-duality. He is peace and love. This Atman is the eternal word Om. Its three sounds, A, U, and M, are the first three states of consciousness, and these three states are the three sounds. So in this short document, what's being described is a basic map, essentially a rubric of the spirit world. You know, many different religions have built various cosmologies, but never so lucidly has a religious tradition produced a document which explains religion in such an intense and yet beautiful way. You know, I love the Mount Dukyo Pasha, I really do. And I guess for me personally, one of the reasons why I love the Mandukya Upanishad is because I've experienced its truth. It was the Mandukya Upanishad who helped lead me and direct me through some of my most profound religious experiences. It's what allowed me to make sense of some of my religious experiences. So what the Mandukya Upanishad describes is that the universe is in fact composed of four levels. Now this is four levels of consciousness, not four levels of physicality. The first level, or the top level, is that of waking consciousness. This is the state of consciousness that we are occupying right now. As you're watching this video, as you go to work every day, as you live your life in the material world, 
you're at this level of waking yeah. consciousness. Below that is the second level, which is the level of dreaming consciousness. This is the level of religion. This is the level of the gods. This is the level of myth and dream and hallucination. This is where the energies of nature and the energies of the body manifest themselves in diverse types and forms. This is really the source of most of our religious ideas. Below that is the third level. This is the level of sleeping without dreams which is a vast emptiness, a void that stretches out. And most of us don't maintain consciousness when we enter this state. You see, when we go to bed at night, we lose consciousness as soon as we fall asleep. Now, perhaps, you know, in the dreaming state, we might be able to hold on to a little bit of our consciousness, but most times we lose it. And at the level of sleeping without dreams, there is absolutely no awareness left. We've completely lost it. Now, what the Hindus tell us, is that it's not that the consciousness has went away. It's not that it ceased to exist. Rather, the consciousness has abandoned the ego. Okay? The sense of a self, the sense of an I, me, myself, and I, right? This notion of an I has lost the consciousness, and that consciousness has returned to its source, which is God, which is the divine. Okay? Now, the goal of the yogi is to penetrate deeper and deeper into this alternative experience. So the first step is to attain consciousness in the waking state. Wake up, become aware, become aware of yourself, start paying attention to your thoughts, feelings, and intuitions. And the way to begin this is meditation, right? Meditation is the practice of watching and disciplining the mind, to teach the mind how to focus, how to center itself and to remain conscious even in the absence of stimulus. The next level comes to dreaming. And the way that we describe waking in a dream is lucid dreaming. So essentially you have to attain the state of dreaming consciously. You become conscious of the dream. At the next level, you have to enter the state of dreamless sleep while retaining a degree of consciousness. Now I'll share with you guys, uh, you know, my first experience with this was I was in a, a state of lucid dreaming and I visualized for myself the most beautiful woman that I could imagine. So I imagined this girl and then as soon as I came into contact with her, as soon as me and her embraced, the whole dream dissolved. Okay, the whole environment dissolved and I was in this vast open darkness, this vast open space that was all void and I looked around. And even in the state of dreaming, I said to myself, in this condition, I said, this must be the void of dreamless sleep. I knew that I'd accomplished it. I knew that I'd reached that state. At, after this level, after you've gone to this third level, there's only one level beyond that which remains. And that is the level of God. That is the level of transcendence. That is the level of brilliant white light. When people are describing a near-death experience, they always describe a white light down a tunnel. In this void of dreamless sleep, you see this brilliant white light. And let me tell you something, you know, I have seen this white light, I've experienced it, and I can tell you distinct details, okay? Number one, the white light carries with it a feeling. There is a very distinct sensation that accompanies that light. And I've encountered it during meditations, I've encountered it during prayers, during worship sessions. I've encountered it in a variety of different ways and in a variety of different places. And that feeling is really what I think of as God. Um, but it accompanies this light. As soon as that light comes into your area, you immediately perceive it and you go, whoa, okay, I feel it. You know, you can feel the presence of this thing. And uh, the white light, when you look at it, it's circular and it has almost like a, a yellow, vibrance to it i don't i don't know it's difficult to describe it's as if the light is alive i don't know how to explain that or rather the light is life itself it's really it's it's it, it's it's almost as if the light has substance to it i don't know how to explain it. it's as if it, it has a, a texture if that makes sense but that's really not appropriate one of the other distinct qualities i noticed about this white light is that around the outside, there's a distinct edge, but this edge seems to dissolve. It's as if space and time itself are dissolving. 
into this white light. Time dissolves and there's just ecstasy, pure and perfect ecstasy. This is the experience of nirvanic release. And it's all the, it's what all the religions are, are after. It's what all the, the mystics are really seeking. And uh, so I hope this helps you guys make sense out of religion a little bit. And uh, I will caution you though, you know, with this knowledge, uh, be careful, okay? Lucid dreaming and seeking these kinds of mystical experiences is dangerous. If, you, if you're not properly prepared, you could be driven insane, you could suffer terrible misfortune. I mean, a lot of bad things can happen. So if you're watching this and you're saying, wow, you know, I really want a part of this, uh, take your time, okay? It took me 10 years to, to have the experiences that I've had, and I felt that I had rushed it. I rushed into those experiences. So if after 10 years, I still felt as if I'd rushed, um, I think that gives you an idea of uh, kind of the timeline that you might be looking at to do these things. So uh, again, you know what? If you guys have any questions, just post down in the comments down below. And as always, thanks for watching. Thanks for stopping by. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and share.